of the First World War to the British. Uh, but it wasn't only the Ottomans who, who lost it, uh, there was also an alliance between uh, the Germans and the Ottomans. Uh, and, uh, one of the consequences of that, uh, that alliance between, between the Germans and the Ottomans is the fact that the Ottomans granted and gave the Germans properties over here in Germany as an act of uh, good friendship. So one of the properties that was given to Kaiser Wilhelm II uh, was a property over here, just behind you, this big chair was built by the Germans, by Kaiser Wilhelm II. And he built this chair uh, to the Catholics of Bavaria. And uh, this is a very interesting Catholic church. And it's a church that commemorates the tradition of Mary sleeping. Mary falling asleep. And that's why, hence the name, it is called the Church of Dormition. According to a tradition that started not actually the first century, it wasn't a new tradition. Tradition that started by the first Christian, that Mary, mother of Jesus, spent the rest of his life, his life with the disciples, certainly with John, the one she was entrusted with, and at a very old age she simply fell asleep, and then her body was taken into the body. And that's why they call it uh, the Dormition and the Assumption. So the church behind me is uh, called the Church of the Assumption, it was built in 1910, and it was built by the, uh, by the German. I'm mentioning the name of Kaiser Wilhelm because uh, on Wednesday we will be on Mount uh, of Olive and we're going to see the church that he built. Also, he took, he was given more than one property. One of them, the Church of the Redeemer, also property that was given by the Turks to the, to the Germans. So, three properties. One here, one is the Redeemer, and the third one is the Augusta Victoria Church on the Mount of Olives that was, that was given by the Turks to the Germans and he named it after his wife. Augusta. No. <laughs> Victoria. Victoria. Yeah. So, uh, so guys, uh, I just mentioned this because this is actually the highest church in Jerusalem skyline today. Today, you can see it from everywhere. Okay. The Church of the Remission. Uh -huh. uh, in the Byzantine Church, there used to be uh, a church that remembered and commemorated Mary's tradition, falling asleep. Mm -hmm. But that church, that big church that was built here in the first century, in the first century, also uh, remembered and commemorated one more tradition. That in this place, uh, right up there, this is where the last room used to be. Uh, la, the, sorry, the last supper. Uh, Ah, yes. and, and that church used to be referred to, or the name of that church, used to be Hagia Sion, that means Holy Zion, and it was uh, referred to, uh, by the people used to, to, to call it the mother of all churches. Now I'm going to get to that, but I always like to start from the very beginning, and I like to go to the first century, and I like to go to Jesus' time. And I like to emphasize the fact that this part of the city was inside the walls or part of the city, of the Roman city in Jesus' time. And Jesus sent two of his disciples. He told them, you go into the city and you'll find a man with a water jar. You remember that story? And he will tell you where the Last Supper will, will happen. Everything was kept in secret, mystery around the location of the Last Supper because it needed to be kept in secret because there was a plot against Jesus made by Judas. So Judas will know about this location at the last moment because something needed to be fulfilled over here. Something needed to be completed. So according to what we know, historical records and the Byzantine church that was here, we know that actually there was a big church called the Mother of All Churches or Holy Zion. And that church included there was an adjacent room believed to have been the room of the Last Supper. It was a simple room above a house. Now, here's an interesting fact that by the, by the Byzantine period, about 300 years after Jesus, people were calling this place over here Mount Zion. And this is very important to understand. People were calling this mountain Zion, Mount Zion. So that's why the Byzantines called this place Holy Zion. 
Like if you go to the origin, if you go to the Old Testament and you try to figure out what does Zion mean, where does that name came from, and it's really a Zion, you find that actually Zion first mentioned in the Old Testament as a reference to the to the fortress that was occupied by David, a Canaanite fortress. So that means that Zion is the small Canaanite city that David will conquer. Now you remember that I mentioned three definitions, big Jerusalem, wall Jerusalem, and the city of David. We are not at the city of David. The city of David is down there to that side. We will go just next and I will point out the city of David. If I want to go where the original Zion fortress of the Canaanite was there, I have to go there. But in the Old Testament, you see that the name Zion often shifted. It was a name that referred to the city of David. And then it became a name that referred to the temple now. Then it was a collective name that referred to Jerusalem because by the rivers of Babylon, uh, we sat down we, and we remember Zion. So they remember Jerusalem. Zion became a name, another name to Jerusalem. Now they call people Zionists. And, okay, but Zion is a name that moved, and now we call this temple Mount Zion. Where did the name came to this mountainside over here? It's because in the year 70 AD, about 40 years after Jesus' time, the temple in Jerusalem was destroyed by the Romans. The Jews were pushed away. And they were not allowed to come anywhere nearby the ruins of the temple, so they were allowed only to come this far and overlook the ruins of the temple. So the name Zion moved to this mountainside. People started calling this mountainside Zion. Is that clear? This is the most complicated part of the story. People's tradition moved to this mountainside, they started calling Zion after the temple was destroyed. The Byzantines, when they built their big church, they came to this reality. This is Zion, they call it Holy Zion, and they remember Jesus last summer. Persians will come after the Byzantines, they will destroy the church, it will be lying in ruins until the 12th century. The 12th century, the Crusaders will come, and they will realize that this is where the room of the Last Supper was at, but it's no longer here because it was destroyed. And this is where Mary's dormition was at. But it's no longer here because the church was destroyed. So the crusaders will decide to do things differently. They will decide to build two churches. One over Mary's dormition side, and one over the Last Supper. They would simply build the church, and they call it the Church of the Last Supper. But they will realize to add one more tradition. Listen to this. They will say to themselves, this is Mount Zion, because by that time they arrived, people were calling this place Zion. If this is Zion, that means this is the city of David. If this is the city of David, this means that this is the place where David's tomb will be at, because the Old Testament says that David is buried in his city. And here's one more thing. If this is the Last Supper room, traditionally this is the place where the disciples were gathered when they received the Holy Spirit, the Pentecost. And after the Pentecost, Peter addressed the disciples and the people who were sitting in Acts chapter 2, verse 29, and he told them, fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that Prophet David has died and his tomb is here with us until this day. Those words were said by David, probably at the Last Supper room after the Pentecost. If Peter was saying these words about David's tomb, he must have said it because David's tomb is right here below us, because this is Zion. But it's not. <laughs> Zion is down there. Zion is at the original city of David. It's a mistake. But they didn't know it was a mistake. So. They built a church and call it the Church of the Last Supper Room, over the side of the Last Supper Room. And they decided that the room, the chamber down below, this is where David tomb is. Who didn't know that was this was a mistake? The Muslims who came after them. Okay. The Muslims, they saw this is a church. But hey, this is David's tomb. He's mentioned in the Quran. You know what? We turn this into a mosque. And we call it the Mosque of Nabi Dawood. The mosque of Prophet David. A mistake, a mistake, over a mistake. 
Now, what makes it even worse is the fact that Israel will take this place in 1948 and they will realize, hey, this used to be a Christian place and then a Muslim place, but wait, this is David's tomb. <laughs> <laughs> Although they know that the city of David is down there and they are convinced that the city of David is down there, but they will say, maybe David's followers took his body and reburied it over here. So the room or the chair of the Last Supper that was turned into a mosque, it would be evacuated, it would be taken and handed to the Ministry of Interior. And the chamber below that was turned into David's tomb will become an active Jewish synagogue. And this is still the case from 1948 until this day. Everybody got that? <laughs> so, so David is actually buried. David is actually buried in his city, at the city of David, just down there where I would point out. Oh, very good. Very good. So where was the Last Supper, for real? Nobody knows. Grant's tomb. <laughs>